What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Before we get started with this review, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Really do appreciate it. Now let's get into the Super Pac-Man that just arrived today. Really, actually, actually excited, legitimately excited about this counter <laughs> Really wanted to get my hands on it, some new features. Really want to check it out. Uh, the box looks great. The artwork looks accurate to the renderings that we saw online. So enough of that. Let's, uh, let's get this thing open. Just a couple quick cuts of the tape on the front will allow you to disassemble the packaging with as little aggravation as possible. <laughs> you can, for the most part, you get to keep the uh, the box intact, which is the same as those second generation cabs. Um, you can see this is going to be about the same size as a second gen countercade. And I got to say, for the most part, the packaging on these uh, these countercades is is pretty cool. It really really shows off the product itself. Open up the top, and the first thing you're going to see is your instructions, your owner's manual there, standard arcade one-up fare. Looks like we're using the same power brick AC adapter to power this bad boy. Similar to what we saw with the second gen. Let me take off the styrofoam spacer slash cover on the top. Get that out of the way, set that aside. And then we can simply just lift the countercade right out of the box. Put the knife out of the way. Don't cut yourself, kids. Safety first. Comes out just like that. And of course, they got the... Uh, I always like this little... <laughs> I know it's a, it's a simple things of life, I guess, that make me happy. But I do enjoy that little plastic cover on the front. Now let's take a look at the artwork, which is... Uh, it's... It's good. I mean, this looks purple, I think, with my camera, but it is a, a blue, sort of a uh, kind of a washed out blue. Back is um, similar to what you can expect with other countercades. Solder looks good. I'm not going to peel this off to see what's underneath. We're just going to go with what's, what's there. And of course, it's a side by side comparison of the second gen. Same height, uh, same dimensions. So there you go. All right, now it's the most. or. <laughs> I don't know, this is the most difficult thing that shouldn't be difficult. I don't know how you describe, other way to describe that. The plastic on these is always captured by the mounting screws. So you've got to take these screws out to get the plastic off in one piece, or else you're just going to be fighting that. So it's frustrating. It's a, it's a little thing, I know, but, you know, come on, RK1, if you need to do better. Take the screws out, and then you can easily peel off the plastic. And of course, it's entirely uh, more difficult when you're talking about the screen protector on the actual screen itself. You have to take up your control panel to get that first layer of plastic off. Then you can set your control panel back in place. And then you're going to have to remove those screws one at a time to really get that plastic off. And of course, the problem gets even worse when you come up top because now the film is actually captured by the marquee. So you just got to kind of pull, just kind of pull. Oh, come on, man. So work on that for a little bit. Uh, pull out the marquee to free up that film. And then let's go ahead and turn this thing on and uh, see what the startup menu looks like. So all the games play, you know, like you would expect uh, with these counter -cades. The joystick is only, eh, so responsive when it comes to Pac-Man. Really wish that was like a Sanwa. Pac-Man plays, uh, well, as you expect, looks about as good as you would expect. Let's check out uh, Rally X, the new, uh, the new game that was added to this compilation. And it's more the same. I mean, it's a Pac-Man, but with a race car. <laughs> but but it is fun. It is different. It doesn't take up the entire screen though. That's the problem with having these horizontal games on a vertical screen. So it, it does seem a little out of place. They should have done something with a border on top and bottom to hide that. Uh, so this is kind of ugly. But I am glad that they you know included a different game on this. Dig Dug is Dig Dug in all of its Dig Dugiest glory. 
plays about the same as you would expect. Um, obviously fills up the screen nice. So the lit marquee is very well lit, very evenly lit, looks nice. But unfortunately, you still have the same uh, screen they're using on that second gen. You look at it from side to side, you're going to have some, some washout and some color distortion. But it is what it is. Alright, so now let's take a look under the hood and see what's different for this third generation. You can see right there to the left that headphone jack. And of course, if you look at the number of wires, You'd be comforted to know that it's actually stereo, it's not mono. So that is definitely good to know. Like the way that connector is there, you can uh, replace that if, if necessary. Move on to the back, and it's the same four screws that hold the cover in place, and you see that we've got a lot of changes to this board. More than just adding a headphone jack. Look around, you see that headphone jack to the right there. Everything else seems to be pretty much the same. Uh, incoming power, micro USB. But there is your standard uh, connection. For the lip marquee, a USB connector, which is different, and then of course there's your headphone jack there. But what I was really surprised by was the inclusion of a micro SD card slot. Um, what possible function could that have? I couldn't tell if there was an actual card in there. We have to do a teardown video later to actually see. But look at the number of ports that are on this, you know, counter simple counter cage. You've got the you know standard USB 2.0, obviously the addition of the micro SD. And then we still have retained the uh, micro USB on the bottom there. So a lot of ports, a lot of possibilities. Now, while the volume can get really loud out of the stock speaker, I had to max out the volume setting when using headphones. But the quality of that sound remains crisp and clear. All right, so there you have it. A brief overview and unboxing of the Super Pac-Man Countercade. I think this thing looks great, and the new additions are well executed. But let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Y'all have a blessed day, and I will see you next time.